The ultimate casual mobile franchise is back with Angry Birds Reloaded. Today we're going to have a look at this version that is exclusive to Apple Arcade. Angry Birds doesn't need an in-depth introduction. After all, it's one of the most popular mobile games ever released by Rovio Entertainment. It was originally released back in 2009 as a paid game, with the free version coming soon after. Like many of you watching, it was one of the first games I ever played on an iPhone. iPhone 3GS to be exact. I'd go as far to say, even if you've never played the game, or if you're a kid and didn't grow up with the series, you most likely know of the franchise. Angry Birds is a big franchise, and it's had a lot of games, focusing on different cultural themes, from holidays, iconic films, and different gaming genres, such as racing, turn-based RPG combat, shoot 'em up match 3, augmented reality, and it goes on and on. The popularity of the game also sparked a global impact, with feature films, TV shows, merchandise, parks and attractions, sports, and most notably and perhaps unfavorably in some areas, it showed how mobile developers can make big bucks with free mobile games. While the original games were not so focused on in-app purchases and ads, the latter were to the point that a lot of controversy was centered around this franchise. Then fairly recently, many of the classic games were taken off the App Store. The games were built on old technology, such as OpenGL, and some of the games were 32-bit and not compatible with the latest devices only supporting 64-bit applications. It's important to mention all of that as we begin discussing Angry Birds Reloaded. Angry Birds Reloaded is, wait for it, the 19th game in the series. Rovio classed the game as neither a remaster nor a remake, instead Reloaded. Confusing, yes, as the game is very similar to the original. You still use a slingshot and must fire birds at pigs and work out how the physics system works to take them all down. That being said, it's Apple and Rovio's attempt at bringing casual gaming back to its glory days. Did they hit the mark here? I'd say yes in some areas. I actually really love this game and I had fun with it. It takes me back to the feeling I had with mobile games back in the late 2000s. If you like the original game or other games in the series with the same gameplay approach, you should have fun here too. But it has a few changes that you need to be aware of that are both good and kind of bad. First, visual and audio changes. Many of the levels are the same from the first game, but have improved visuals for the character models and background elements. There are also new worlds that are inspired by other games in the series and the films. The art style for the gameplay and cinematics is leaning more to the movie style, thankfully without the limbs. This could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what style you prefer, but to be honest, I am fine with it. The music and sounds of the birds and explosions and so forth is not a complete copy of the original, which is a shame at times, but it does have a few nods to the original that you'll notice as you play it. Iconic birds have made a return too. Red, the standard bird. Blues, who can split into three birds on your command. Chuck, who can boost mid-air to cause more damage. Bomb, who well, explodes on your command or after the timer runs out. Terence, who is a buff version of Red, I think. 
Matilda that has exploding eggs popping out of the behind. Hal who can arc in the opposite direction to attack the bases. Plus new playable pig characters from the hero flock in the Angry Birds movie too. To my knowledge, Angry Birds Reloaded is the first game of the series to have controller support on the App Store. To my surprise, it works really well. If you're playing the game on an iPhone or iPad, I'd always suggest playing with the touchscreen controls, but Ravio have still optimized the game for a controller really well. This is great if you're playing on an Apple TV or a Mac, or if you have a backbone controller, or your iPad is raised up with a case. The menu navigation is very simple. You can easily select a level from the home screen or go into settings, the shop, or change your name or check the leaderboard, all with your controller. When in game, players can use the left analog stick on their controller to aim at the birds. I found the sensitivity was very accurate or the best it could be compared to using your fingers. You can then press the action button to shoot and use it again if your bird has a ability. You can use the arrow keys to select an ability too and it works the same way. But my favorite little feature is having the ability to quickly restart a level by just holding one button on the controller. This is so useful when you know you're going to fail a shot and can quickly restart with the press of one button. With the touchscreen controls, you have to open the menu, then click restart, and it just takes a tad longer. It's a small thing, but I found it very helpful. The game also now contains a leaderboard. There has been some confusion with this, and it makes sense. According to Ravio, competing with other players is not possible in Angry Birds Reloaded. So, the leaderboards will contain only the player profiles that have been created under your iCloud profile. This is such a shame for me. Many other games on arcade show leaderboards with your friends under Game Center or random players. So why isn't it possible here? The game now includes power-ups, many seen in other Angry Birds games. Power Potion increases the size of your bird so they can cause more damage. Sling Scope lets you more accurately target the piggies or a specific point of their base. King Sling propels your birds faster and further. Bird Quake is exactly as it sounds, creating an earthquake to cause damage to the bases of the pigs. Boombox provides you with explosive TNT. Wingman has enhanced speed and a shockwave. The thing to consider with these power-ups is not to use them too quickly. I used them all up in the first world and I regret it. Getting points is quite hard in this game, more than before I'd say. It's possible a few ways though. You get points for pigs popped obviously, birds unused, and how much stuff you destroy in the process. On some levels, you'll need to destroy a lot of the materials to hit a three star rating. This is where the power-ups come in. They can be very useful for helping to get three stars on levels. You only get five of each power-up though, which is a very small number. If you run out, you can buy refills from the shop using coins you earned from clearing levels. But the power-ups are really, really expensive. One TNT box costs 80 coins or 10 costs 800. The cheapest options for some power-ups are starting at 20 coins. You can't easily grind for the coins either. You can earn more bird coins by replaying levels you have passed before, but you can only earn coins you have not collected yet. There is a limit, in other words. Look, I actually really like using the power-ups. It adds an exciting gameplay mechanic, but it has not been implemented well here, in my opinion. Yes, you don't actually have to get three stars on each level, but 
The game is built so heavily around power-ups that it's a shame it's so unbalanced. Maybe Rovio add a separate mode, such as challenges. This could be another option to grind for coins that can be used in the story mode. Yes, there is the mode Eagle Island, but getting to this island involves collecting 560 stars from the levels in the story mode. So this will take a while to complete. A lot of people say the game was originally designed to be free to play and then the in-app purchases were removed when it came to arcade, but I don't really believe that is the case. I think it's more of a case of the game having major balancing issues right now with the power-ups and points. The game also is held back by a few pesky bugs. For starters, the loading times after you finish a level are quite bad. It was most apparent on the Apple TV. Sometimes it took, wait for it, near two minutes to load the next level. Two minutes. Second, there are issues with performance, which is weird as this is not really a high-end 3D game or anything. Plus, sometimes when you shoot the birds into the air, they kind of stutter or their frame rate is lower than other elements in the scene. It's not a major problem, but it's quite noticeable. Even on my iPad Pro and iPhone 12, these issues persist. Have you played Angry Birds Reloaded on Apple Arcade? If so, what do you think of it? Do you prefer the original game or maybe Angry Birds 2? Or do you love this game? I don't know, let me know in the comments. Leave a like to show your support and subscribe to stay up to date with everything Apple gaming related. My name is Stewie and thanks for watching.